Ableton Live isn't just for beats. It's a powerful tool to make your vocals sound amazing. Today we'll import a vocal and use effects like EQ, compression and reverb to give it that professional polish. I'm Thomas Foster and I'll guide you through the mixing process right here in Ableton Live. Check out the full playlist with all parts of the series. The link is in the description. Good to have you here. Let's go. Welcome to Thomas Foster Music Production. Before we dive in, artificial intelligence has radically changed my workflow as a music producer in the past few months. I use AI to assist with composing, songwriting, arranging, sound design, vocal generation, choir creation, mixing and mastering. If you want to stay ahead as a music producer in the coming years, you can't ignore this trend. My book, Artificial Intelligence in Music and Audio Production, Shaping the Sound of Tomorrow, gives you a clear and compact overview of all the AI tools that can take your production to the next level. My name is Thomas Foster. Thank you for watching. Always stay creative and get the book now on Amazon and everywhere books are sold. If you open Ableton Live, it probably looks like this. Let's change from the session view to the arrangement view by clicking this button here. And here we have two MIDI tracks and two audio tracks. As we work with audio in this episode, let's erase the two MIDI tracks by selecting them and pressing the backspace key on your keyboard. To import an audio file, simply drag the file from the desktop to your first track. And we want to hear this vocal file here in a loop. So we activate the loop and we set the beginning at the beginning of the vocal file and the end at the end of the vocal file. Let's check this out. I place the cursor here to see if the loop is working. Forever, you and I. That's the vocal of Ariane. Ariane is the singer of my band iVotion and that's our song Traveling. The first thing we want to do is to use a compressor to bring the dynamic a little bit down so we can make the vocal louder. So. If the browser is not open now, you open it with this little arrow here. Then we go to audio effects and here we choose the compressor. We place the compressor on the first track. With the compressor, you set a threshold and everything louder than the threshold is compressed. Because everything above the threshold is shared by the ratio. <laughs> That's the theory. So let's look how we do this in praxis. We have here three graphic mode. I would recommend graphic mode number three, this one here. Here is the threshold. The more you get down with this blue line, the more it's getting compressed because everything above the blue line is getting compressed. So we play the file. At the moment, nothing is compressed because, because the threshold is louder than our signal. But now we go down and the more we go down, if we try to follow our in the, mood. the compressor is working. How much it is working we see with the yellow line. If we try to follow our and how much it is compressed we also decide with the ratio. Let's change the ratio to see what it's doing. If we try to one to one means nothing is happening. We could fly. Two to one means everything over the threshold is divided with two. If we try. And six to one means everything on top of the threshold is divided with six. If we try to follow our way around the moon. So that does not sound so nice. So what we should do, we should go up with threshold and go to something like 2 to 1, 3 to 1, somewhere here. Then if we try to follow our way around the mood for that sounds nice. Very important is the makeup. The makeup is doing nothing, it's just bringing up the volume. So if you don't click on the makeup, your signal is getting 
with very less volume. To bring the volume up at the uh, end, if we click the makeup. All right. So we go to 2.5 to 1 and set the threshold somewhere here. Next thing we want to do is to place an EQ8 on our track. Here we have eight bands. With the blue button you activate the band or you deactivate the band. Let's deactivate every band but we activate the number one. All right. And here we have some modes for every band. We start with the parametric EQ. That's this symbol here. Um, we have here frequency, gain and the Q. With the frequency you choose a frequency. With the gain you push this frequency or you bring the volume for this frequency down. Let's listen to this. Let's push it for 10 dBs and now we go through the frequencies. If we try to follow or we're in the mood for we could fly forever. So, um, the range you see here is exactly the range we are able to hear. This starts at 20 hertz and it goes up to 20,000 hertz, means 20 kilohertz. The bases are the low frequencies starting at 20 and going up to, let's say, 2, 3, 400. If we try to follow our way the problem is the voice don't have so low frequencies. So we hear nothing if we push something under 100 because there is nothing important under 100. Uh, the frequency of a female voice starts at 200 or 250. The mid frequencies are at uh, 1k, and for example. If we try 2K, to follow 3K. Or we're in the mood for we And the high frequencies starts at, I would say, 5 kilohertz. If we try Up to 20. To follow or we're in the mood for we you can push these frequencies or you can bring them down. If we try to follow or we're in Very important is also this one here called the coup. With the Q you can say how wide your band is. You can make it very wide like this or very small like this. If we try to follow or we're in the mood for we could fly. If we try to follow... Okay, that's the parametric EQ. But we also have some other guys. Let's start with these two here, I would take the second one, the high pass filter. The high pass filter is cutting all the low frequencies, so the high frequencies are passed. And this sounds like this. Now we just hear the very high frequencies. And now we go to the left, so we have more lower frequencies. Forever. That's a high pass filter. The low pass filter is doing the opposite. Low frequencies. And we add the high frequencies. Forever. Here the Q is working a little bit different. If you push the Q, you have this peak here. And with the peak, you hear more the movement of the frequency. Listen to this. If we try to follow or we in the mood for we could fly. All right. So we have the parametric EQ, the high pass, the low pass. And one very important is the shelf EQ. We also have a high shelf and low shelf EQ. With a high shelf, you can push the frequencies that are higher than the frequency you set here. So if I go to 5 kilohertz, we push everything that is higher than 5 kilohertz. If we try to follow or we we'll make the, the volume, for we, we make less volume. Forever. You can do the same with the low shelf EQ. So we push the low frequencies that are lower than 500. If we try 
Or we make them less valuable. All right. Now we want to find a way to make the vocal sounding nicer. The first thing we want to do is we take a high pass filter and we kill all the low frequencies. I said the female vocal starts at 200 or 250, maybe Ariane at 300 because she has a, a little bit more high voice. So let's kill everything that is lower than 100 because there you just have the plops and the, the things, the noises you don't want to have. If we try to follow Nothing important is missing. If we try to follow our way around. But we kill the bad stuff that we don't want. Next thing, we take a high shelf EQ. I take the number 7 because there is already a high shelf chosen. Um, we activate it and push the volume starting at, let's say, 7K. Then, if we try to follow our way around the mood for we... That sounds nice. Um, to make it more present, we at the number 5, for example, we go to 5K and push it also a little bit. If we try That's too much. To follow our Something like this is good. Uh, I would like in this case also to bring out the low mids a little bit here then, at 500, but not too much. If we try That's too much. To follow our the mood for we Something like this sounds forever. nice. Next station is delay. In Ableton 10.1, they changed the delay. In the past, we had the ping pong delay and the filter delay. Now, we simply have the delay. Let's take the delay, place it on the track or place it here. That's the delay. What is a delay doing? It's delaying our audio signal. Uh, let's listen to this. The most important thing here, the dry, wet slider. If it's on the left side, we just hear the dry signal without any effect of the delay. If, we try, if it's on the right side, we just hear the effect, but not the dry signal. If we try, so to hear it a little bit, let's go to something like 30-40%. How long the delay is, you choose here with these points. If this is connected, you choose the delay time for left and right. If this is not connected, you can choose another delay time on the right side than on the left side. Let's uh, keep it um, the same length on both sides for now. We are now in sync mode. If you're not in sync mode, you can choose a time in milliseconds. So 1000 milliseconds is one second. Let's go to 1000. Now it says one second. That's one second, right? Uh, and if, if we go down to, let's say, 200 milliseconds, it sounds like this. But we click here on time to go to sync. And now we have these numbers. And these are the 16th of a bar. This sounds just right for your vocal if you have the right tempo chosen. So the vocal is in 105 BPM. We are here in our tempo of the song also at 105 BPM. So this is fine. We can choose now the delay time in 16th. So this is 1 16th. Sounds very fast. If we try. Uh, two th sixteenths are an eighth note, and four sixteenths are a quarter. This sounds very logic. Wonderful. With the feedback, you can say how many repeatings do you want to have. Uh, zero uh, feedback means you have one repeating. And that's it. With 100%, it's not possible to go to 100%, but 95, the maximum, would sound like this. 
the never ending story. So, but it's good to have this because now we can test what this is. If you go down with this, you filter your feedback. Let's try this. I go to 100% so we hear more the effect. I go down. High frequencies. Low frequencies. So I would stay somewhere in the middle. Make it not too strong. Make it a little bit working. So we go somewhere to not up, not down. Somewhere in the middle. Let's listen to this. That sounds nice. Okay, with the feedback we go maybe to 20%. Here also we go to maybe to 10%. If we, try to follow our in the mood for we, we could choose another delay time for the right side to have a better stereo effect. So we disconnect it and let's go, yes, let's go to 6 16th. So this is a 3 8th note. If we try to follow up Sounds nice. Uh, let's go down to 15% and every audio effect have, has this button here. With this button you can deactivate it or activate it. So let's deactivate the delay for the moment so we hear better what we do with the next effect. What is the reverb? Let's go down to reverb and place the reverb after the delay. A reverb is a room. Let's listen to this. If we, try to fuck. we also have this dry, wet signal. If we, try to follow we have the decay time that tells us how long is our delay. If we try to follow our in the mood for and we have some filters for the early reflections and for the diffusion. If we try. But another way that you always can do on every effect, you can go to the presets. You have this little button here. If you click on it, uh, it's getting orange and you open this thing here in your browser. And here you can choose presets simply by double clicking them. Let's try the vocal hall. The only thing I want to change is the dry wet. If we try to follow up. Maybe we go down a little bit with the decay time to 2.30. If we try to That's nice. And let's add the delay. If we try to follow up, we're in the mood for we could fly. Forever. I like it. Artificial intelligence has radically changed my workflow as a music producer in the past few months. I use AI to assist with composing, songwriting, arranging, sound design, vocal generation, choir creation, mixing and mastering. If you want to stay ahead as a music producer in the coming years, you can't ignore this trend. My book, Artificial Intelligence in Music and Audio Production, Shaping the Sound of Tomorrow, gives you a clear and compact overview of all the AI tools that can take your production to the next level. My name is Thomas Foster. Thank you for watching. Always stay creative and get the book now on Amazon and everywhere books are sold. Cheers! Welcome to Thomas Foster Music Production.